Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregson. In this video, we're going to talk about orthogonal projections in Rn. So we've seen so far how to project a vector u onto a line containing the vector v in R2. So we just calculate the projection vector. That would be this vector right here, which we call u hat. And sometimes we write it as the projection of u onto the vector v. And we calculate that by taking u dot v divided by v dot v, whatever this number is, times our vector v. That's how we calculate this projection vector. And then we can use that to find a vector that's perpendicular to v, where the sum of u hat and this vector is equal to u. Specifically, we just take u minus our u hat. That will give us this perpendicular vector. And so we've done that before in R2. We'd like to extend this idea up to Rn. So let's just change our vocabulary and talk about the same process in terms of vector spaces. So consider the following restatement of this problem. Let w equal set of all vectors such that w is equal to some constant times our vector v. We'll think of this vector space. What is this vector space? It's just the line that contains v. It's a subspace of R2. So and really what we're doing is we're projecting u onto this subspace. And then furthermore, if we take our orthogonal vector u minus u hat as a basis for another vector space, so for instance, if we let v equal the set of all vectors such that v is some constant times u minus u hat, so once again, we're taking that perpendicular vector as a basis, then what is this subspace? Well, this subspace is exactly w perp. It's the orthogonal complement to w. So if we think about it this way, we're taking a vector in our r space, r2. We're projecting it onto a subspace w. And rewriting u as a vector in w plus some vector in w perp. And the fact that we can always do this is really the point of our next theorem. The orthogonal decomposition theorem states that if we have w, let w be a subspace of Rn, and then each vector in Rn can be uniquely written as the sum of y hat plus z, where y hat is in our subspace w, and z is in w perp. So that's exactly what we just did, but this orthogonal decomposition theorem is saying that we can always do this. The only question now is, how do we find this y hat? In the last example, it was just the projection of y onto our other vector. But now if we're projecting onto a larger space that has more than one basis vector, what do we do? Well, this theorem tells us a little bit more. It also says that if we have a basis, an orthogonal basis, make sure we have an orthogonal basis for w, then to find this y hat, instead of just projecting onto one vector, we project onto each of the basis vectors in our orthogonal basis. And we look at that sum. So what is y hat? It's the projection of y onto each of the basis vectors. So of course, we can write out those definitions if we want. This would be y dot u1 over u1 dot u1 plus y dot u2 over u2 dot u2, oops, sorry, this first one is times u1, the second one is times the u2 vector, plus dot, 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 plus the projection of y onto up, so that would be y dot up, divided by up dot up, times the vector up. So if we calculate all those projection vectors, we sum them all up, that will give us y hat. And then, of course, to find our z, it's just calculating that difference, y minus y hat. All right, so now let's look at a quick example. So now we have a vector v, and let w be all of the vectors in the xy plane. So specifically, w is the set of all vectors w, these should be vectors, that are equal to a linear combination of these two vectors. And that would, once again, give us all of the vectors in the xy plane. And I've drawn out what these vectors are. Now what I'm going to consider here is that these two vectors, u1, I'll say, and u2, but those really form an orthogonal basis for all of the vectors in xy plane. We can see they're a basis because the linear combination gives us all of w. And we can also see they're orthogonal if we took the dot product of those two vectors. We would get negative 2 plus 2, which is equal to 0. So now we want to find some vector in w plus some vector in w perp that give us v. 
what we want to do first is project v, and here's our vector v, down onto the xy plane. Now we can kind of see what that's going to look like. We can kind of see that this should be our projection vector, but how do we calculate what that vector exactly is? Well, we take v hat, and now it should be equal to the projection of our vector v onto our orthogonal basis. v onto u1 plus projection of v onto u2. So this should be v dot u1. So it looks like v dot u1 over u1 dot u1 times the vector u1 plus v dot u2 over u2 dot u2 times the vector u2. If we calculate these pieces, take v1 dotted with u1, I will get 2 plus 2 plus 0. I'll divide that by u1 dot u1, which would be 4 plus 1. And that times the vector u1, which is 2, 1, 0. Plus, now I take v dot u2, which should give me negative 1 plus 4, divided by u2 dot u2, which should be 1 plus 4 times the vector u2, negative 1, 2, 0. So this looks like 4 fifths times our first basis vector plus 3 fifths times our second basis vector. Now I've drawn those two va basis vectors on there, here and here. And so just stopping and looking at it in this perspective here, it looks like I take four fifths of that first basis vector, so maybe I come out to about here, and I take three fifths of the other one, which is a little bit smaller. I take the sum of those two vectors, which we can see really does guide me to this projection vector. And when I add these pieces up, I get, well, I get eight fifths minus three fifths in the first component. I would get four fifths plus six fifths in the second component and 0 plus 0 in the last component, and this looks like 1 and 2 and 0. So I get the vector 1, 2, 0. And of course, if I look at what v is, 1, 2, 3, I should be able to see also that if I projected that down on the xy plane, 1, 2, 0 makes sense as a result. And as a last step, now I can calculate this perpendicular vector, my z vector. z is going to be just my vector v minus my projection vector. So that is 1, 2, 3, minus the vector 1, 2, 0. And the result, as we can kind of see from the picture, is going to be 0, 0, 3. And so what have we done here? We've represented our vector v as the sum of two vectors. It's represented as the sum of the vector 1, 2, 0, and the other vector 0, 0, 3. And these two vectors are perpendicular. One of these vectors is in w, one of them is in the xy plane, and the other one is in w perp. So now we've extended our idea into a projecting onto a subspace into R3, and of course we could extend this into higher dimensions R as well. We would simply continue to add on other basis vectors for higher dimensions of Rn. All right, so that concludes this video. Thank you very much.